Welcome to the Folktale Project, this is Dan Scholes. Today we have our final fable from Jean de La Fontaine, and this story is one that resonates particularly strong in these times. And, quite honestly, not for the reason that you're going to think when you hear the title. This is The Animals Sick of the Plague. One of those dread evils which spread terror far and wide, and which heaven in its anger ordains for the punishment of wickedness upon earth, a plague, in fact, and so dire a one as to make rich in one day that grim ferryman who takes a coin from all who cross the river Asheron to the land of the dead, such a plague was once waging war against the animals. All were attacked, although all did not die. So hopeless was the case that not one of them attempted to sustain their sinking lives. Even the sight of food did not rouse them. Wolves and foxes no longer turned eager and calculating eyes upon their gentle and guileless prey. The turtle doves went no more in cooing pairs, but were content to avoid each other. Love and the joy that comes of love were both at an end. At length. The lion called a council of all the beasts and addressed them in these words. My dear friends, it seems to me that it is for our sins that heaven has permitted this misfortune to fall upon us. Would it not be well if the most blameworthy among us allowed himself to be offered as a sacrifice to appease the celestial wrath? By doing so he might secure our recovery. History tells us that this course is usually pursued in such cases as ours. Let us look into our consciences without self-deception or condoning. For my own part, I freely admit that in order to satisfy my gluttony I have devoured an appalling number of sheep. And yet, what had they done to me to deserve such a fate? Nothing that could be called an offense. Sometimes, indeed, I have gone so far as to eat the shepherd too. On the whole, I think I had better render myself for this act of sacrifice, that is, if we agree that it is a thing necessary to the general good. And yet I think it would be only fair that everyone should declare his sins as well as I, for I could wish that in justice it were the most culpable that should perish. Sire, said the fox, you are really too yielding for a king, and your scruples show too much delicacy of feeling. Eating sheep indeed, what of that? A foolish and rascal tribe. Is that a crime? No! A hundred times no! On the contrary, your noble jaws did but do them great honor. As for the shepherd, it may be fairly said that all the harm he got he merited, since he was one of those who fancy they have dominion over the animal kingdom. Thus spake the fox, and every other flatterer in the assembly applauded him. Nor did any seek to inquire deeply into the least pardonable offenses of the tiger, the bear, and the other mighty ones. All those of an aggressive nature, right down to the simple watchdog, were something like saints in their own opinions. When the ass stood forth in turn, he struck a different note, nothing of fangs and talons and blood. I remember, he said, that once in passing a field belonging to a monastery I was urged by hunger, by opportunity, by the tenderness of the grass, and perhaps by the evil one egging me on, to enter and crop just a taste, about as much as the length of my tongue. I know that I did wrong, having really no right there. At these words all assembly turned upon him. The wolf took himself to make a speech, proving without doubt that the ass was an accursed wretch, a mangy brute, who certainly ought to be told off for sacrifice, since through his wickedness all their misfortunes had come about. His peccadillo was judged to be a hanging matter. What? Eat the grass belonging to another? How abominable a crime! Nothing but death could expiate such an outrage! And forthwith they proved as much to the poor ass. Accordingly, as your power is great or small, the judgment of a court will whiten or blacken your reputation. And in this story, The Animals Sick of the Plague, we see a group of animals taking a rational 
positions about how to cure a plague, which, while it marries nicely with the times, it's not even really the, the purpose of the story. The purpose of the story is to show that power and proximity to power have an undue influence over the legal system, which is most certainly true. This is Dan Schultz for the Folktale Project. Don't forget that you can subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, Overcast, anywhere you like to get your podcasts. You can follow us on Twitter at Folktale Project. You can find us on Auto Radio, TuneIn Radio, iHeart Radio, Spotify, anywhere you like to listen. And you can always head over to folktaleproject.com where you'll find a new story waiting for you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Next week, we'll be back with three new tales. As always, thank you so much for listening.